Hello, and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Off Demystified podcast. I'm extremely happy to be joined by Carol Chen, currently the VP of Sales Operations at Car Gurus. Carol, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, now, from my research, I see we have approximately six years' experience in sales ops at a couple of different businesses. So I'm looking forward to digging into kind of the different experiences of these different types of companies because I see there's quite a range, or at least I think there is. Um, but before that, Carol, um, could you share more about kind of why and how you got into sales operations in the first place? Sure. Um, so I started working in operations before it was even called sales operations. At that time, it was like business operations. Um, so then I went into sales. I was an account manager for two years and then became uh, an account executive for two years. And then I realized that sales from the sales perspective wasn't my calling. Um, and I felt that every call I was talking about the same things. And I felt like operations, every day your day was dynamic, you were making changes that would impact um, the company at large, and it wasn't you know, an individual contribution, so I was really enticed by that. Got it, you kind of felt like you were just, like the same sales pitch over and over and over again, whereas actually you prefer more variety. Yeah, exactly. Cool, okay. So then we came into, so we came from sales into operations before it was sales operations, and then yeah. since then you've, for the last six years, you've just been doing sales operations, right? Correct. Yep. Cool. And have you seen the field evolve over those six years? Have you seen anything change? Oh, for sure. I think when I started it in actually called sales operations six years ago, there were very few companies that were hiring for it. Um, it wasn't such a um, popular job title or career and I've seen it explode where sales operation is what everyone is looking for and most companies are trying to hire um, mm. and interestingly enough it's actually recently I think been pivoting to more of a revenue operations role rather than keeping it mainly within sales. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I'd like to take some credit for the growth of sales operations because of the, I mean, this podcast has been instrumental. I'm joking. Um, I totally agree with your shift to revenue operations. Um, but my question is, why do you think that is? Over the last six years, you've seen this explosion in people hiring for this role. Do you, do you have any theories on why? I think that the role was always there. It just wasn't unified under one title called sales operations. It was either some of the roles existed in finance, some of it existed in marketing, some of it existed in sales itself. And now as companies try to redefine what organizations look like, they're carving this role out specifically and then putting extreme focus on it to understand how to really grow business um, from a um, data standpoint rather than just, um, you know, looking at uh, a couple metrics, but looking at really how do you propel growth forward? Yeah, I, this is what I've heard from other guests as well, is that sales is becoming more of a science and because they're getting a lot more information from these online systems and therefore you need a person who's able to look at the data and be like, actually, this is what we should do differently in, in order to make more sales. Um, Cool. Now, fast forward to today at Car Gurus. What is the current size of the sales team and how many of operations people are supporting them? So we have about 400 or so salespeople um, being supported by 20 um, sales operations folks. Got it. So it's a 5% off to a 1 to 5, no? Yeah. 1 to 50, sorry, uh, ratio. I think my math is right there. Um, cool. Okay. And you are, you're, you're leading that team of 20. Mm -hmm. Cool. And can you roughly break down the roles of people within the team? Do you have like four people just focused on Salesforce, like X amount of people focused on enablement? Yeah, sure. So 
The team is broken down into um, seven verticals. One is Salesforce. Um, so that includes front end user support, um, sales support desk, uh, troubleshooting, you know, issues that come up, building the roadmap. Um, then we also have um, a group that is focused on reporting and analytics. So they try to run the company's um, analysis to figure out, you know, how we should pivot or how we're doing on discounts or pricing. Then we have a group that's focused on just the inter Applying data in our systems. Um, as you grow, companies accumulate uh, bad data as we change systems or we change sales processes. So just cleaning up internal data is important. Then we have a group focused on sales process, um, you know, how to become more efficient and effective to sell. Sales planning, looking at budget, headcount, um, ROEs, uh, territories. Then we have commissions, um, so how to align the business strategy to pay the sales reps. And then lastly, uh, we also have sales enablement. So in each of those groups, um, there's about two to three people um, that support each of those functions. Got it. And can you briefly share a list of tech tools that you guys are currently using? Yeah, so we definitely use Salesforce. That's our CRM system. Um, it's used by the entire company. We, for our billing systems, we use Sora. Um, and then we also are looking at um, other tools for commissions. Um, but from a tech stack, we're running very lean for what we are today. Um, we use a lot of tools that, you know, are specific for some groups. Um, so not widely used like Salesforce is across the company, but we have like Yaxel and Outreach um, and Map Anything. So very lean, I would say, for us. Got it. And can you, I like, I know you probably have a, a broad list of things, answers for this question. Um, but can you share like the coolest thing you've done out of all of your sales ops experience? Uh, regarding to making either a single rep or a team of reps more productive. Like the thing that you did and you were like, wow, we have just like significantly improved how much these people can sell. Um, that's a really good question. It's, um, I think one of the things that we did um, was ensuring everyone who wasn't using Salesforce at the time when I joined the company um, used Salesforce by the end of two quarters. So when I joined this company, I measured the Salesforce adoption rate. They were probably around 19%. Um, we rolled out Salesforce, rebuilt it, did training, measured it every week. And by the second quarter of my start date, we were over 90% of an adoption rate. And it's a really good stat because um, when you have everyone using Salesforce, the data becomes real time and you can make decisions real time. And not only that, on, from a rep perspective, um, you actually get to see your full book of business. Who did you last contact um, if you put in the task or you sync emails? Um, when was this opportunity closed, lost? Like what was the reason? All those things um, that you wouldn't have if you were writing it, let's say, on a piece of paper or capturing it in Excel. Um, data gets lost in all of those ways, but uh, if you have it in Excel, every rep now really owns their own book of business. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty substantial jump. Did you manage to, to get from 90 to 100 over the, over the following quarters? Uh, no. <laughs> we got to like 95 or so. We never got yeah. to 100. It's always the CEO, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, 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 we won't say that. Um, cool. Next, I'd like to talk about the sales forecasting process right now at Car Gurus. Are you guys responsible for that and how does the process work? So we're in, in um, so I only started at Car Gurus about six months ago. So we're in the process of trying to um, build out Salesforce forecasting in a more systematic way. Um, we were looking at tools to also do that or within native Salesforce, but um, 
with with all the recent things that have been happening, we've reverted to our own style or old style of forecasting, which is just done by the reps that are rolled up to the manager, that are rolled up to the VP, and they give a forecast as opposed to a more um, a calculated way of getting a forecast number, which is, you know, based on close rate or based on stage, um, based on rep. So we're sort of going old school for now, um, but want to try to get it to a more advanced stage. Got it. So it's on the roadmap. Um, you also mentioned about oh, things changing recently. I assume that more of the team have gone remote in the past few weeks. How have you guys being able to ensure the productivity of the reps during this time, e.g. with different tools or different meetings or processes? Yeah, so we're actually all remote, 100%. Um, most of our team is based in Boston, so we're all remote. And then we have a few offices internationally, and they're also in the UK or Ireland, um, so they're also remote. We measure productivity in a couple ways. Um, on a very simple way, we count the number of activities in phone calls, quality calls, um, emails that are sent, tasks that are created, and we basically look at the average pre-COVID and post-COVID to see how reps are trending um, and to see variation by roles too. And then um, on a more um, on a more uh, I guess thorough basis, we also have given the team um, MBO goals per month for Q2 that are more strategic. So um, not only are you trying to build out account strategy packages, but also, you know, doing some training on how to sell with a product um, or without a product, right? So most of our conversations in the past have led with product first, but now we want to become that um, trusted advisor for our dealers on, you know, we understand you're going through this period and how can car gurus help as opposed to just pushing products. So take this opportunity to also pause, train our reps a little more for them to learn and engage with the um, dealer's business. Um, so lots of things that we're doing on a weekly basis that are quick to um, just check general stats and a more thorough planning on how we want each month to look like. Got it. So you, you can relatively actually track a salesperson's activity or you are tracking a salesperson's activity both pre and post COVID. Mm -hmm. So you can see if there's any significant drop offs in activity there. Cool. Mm -hmm. Then you're also taking the, this, this quieter time to build better relationships with the dealers. Right, exactly. Uh, and is, is that something you guys have actively said to the sales team? Like, look, now maybe we're not going to close the sale in the next two months, but here's the time where we can work on building the relationship. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of um, helping sales right now with their talk tracks, um, helping them learn more about the business. Like, can we move to digital business? Can you move online? You know, what else can we do? Or are you really based on only foot traffic? And how is the change happening in your state? Because over here, each state is a different um, stay at home uh, call. So we're trying to operate and um, pivot as much as we can to, to help out each state that's different. Got it. So you actually have to have different kind of protocols or communication for different states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's complex. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Now I'm going to put you on the spot here, Carol. If you could only measure one, sales metric for the rest of your career, which would you choose? Um, the sales count? Um, I think that can count, but you have to give a rationale for why you're choosing that over, over the rest. Okay. Um, so I would say like the end goal of, in my mind, of sales operations is to increase revenue. Um, either you know, you can invest in a tool, but that tool's ROI should be X amount of um, the, the cost. Or, you know, you can invest in sales operations teams for training or other things, but still everything should be a net gain in revenue. Um, 
So I think the way that I would measure is, are we generating additional revenue with the things that sales operations is doing? Like, and if we were, then we're successful. But if we're not, then we're not successful. It doesn't matter. Like if we made a thousand calls, even though the goal, let's say is only 500, it doesn't matter if we're not hitting any numbers, then those calls are not effective. Those calls are not working and something from the sales operations side should be done. Cool. So you're saying that anything you guys do, you have to try and track it back to Revenue. making set. And, but is that possible? Are you able to say the, the one training session or the, the, the training that you're giving reps now during these COVID times, can you tie that back to an increased sale at some point in the future? Like, I think um, there are things you can track back more easily. And then there are some things where you're tracking on a very general scale. I think, um, you know, the trainings we're doing here today now are maybe impacts that we'll see over the course of the next few months. Um, But there are other things that I think we're doing that you immediately can see the impact, like sales commission, the way we've put it in spiffs, you can see that impact like day one, right? Because salespeople will immediately react to what pays them more. Oh, okay, I'm going to sell that. And then you'll, you'll see that change. So um, you can see some of the things uh, right now, some of the things late, maybe a couple months, and then some of the things really long-term. Got it. Okay. But the ultimate goal is to ensure that everything you guys are doing is somehow leading to an increase in sales. Correct. Yep. Mm-hmm. Cool. And if not, then you're going to start doing them and start doing stuff that is. Right, we've got to pivot and adjust. Cool. So could you then maybe take this to the extreme and then have a, you, you could essentially calculate how much additional revenue each person in your team is creating. Would you ever do that? Is that possible? Um, I don't know that that's possible for every role, but I do think it's very possible for some of the teams. Mm. that are focused on improving sales force, that's an efficiency, um, f- commissions, that's the way we sell, what products are, do we find more strategic to sell versus not, um, from a sales enablement standpoint, like what vendors and tools do we bring on and you can measure the ROIs on those. So I think some of them you can, um, some of them like data cleanup or data integrity, I don't know that you can easily measure back. Yeah, that would be quite hard. I mean, potentially, if like cleaning the data saves each salesperson 30 minutes a week, then you could add that up for extra time spent selling, and that could potentially give you a number for that one thing someone did. But yeah, it gets quite complex. Um, right. Okay, That's assuming that the sales rep uses that 30 minutes to sell. Yeah, very true, very true. Um, cool. Final question. Who in your career has educated or influenced you the most uh, in your sales ops career? Um, one of my previous managers, um, her name is Amy Katamatsu. Um, she has helped me in my career more than she even knows. And she knows a lot. I don't make, I don't really make changes in my career without talking to her first. She's the one who helped me get my first sales operations job, um, and has helped me my entire career. Oh, shout out to Amy. Um, cool. So two things I picked out of the interview um, that I think a lot of the listeners can definitely incorporate. The first is not being so hard on salespeople to hit ROI during these, these times and actually use the time to build brand, build a relationship. Um, but then second is you're, I think this is the, you're the person who's been most focused on ensuring that the work you do impacts the bottom line. Um, And so that focus on trying to track back an ROI on your activities. Um, I I guess sales leadership and business leadership really, really like that. And I think a lot of other people listening or that I've spoke to on this podcast could benefit from having more of a focus on that. Um, So Carol, those were the two things I really liked. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for your time.